Hey, what's going on guys? So this is Chompers and Chompers is the world's friendliest bobcat. So Chompers lives at the Extreme Wildlife Foundation here in Northern Florida. I'm here with Sabrina. She's also a YouTuber. We're gonna do a collab and we're gonna spend the afternoon with Chompers and you're gonna see why Chompers is the world's friendliest bobcat. <laughs> So this is Chompers. This is not only the friendliest bobcat in the world, but this is my favorite bobcat in the world. So tell us everything about Chompers. He's the best. Wait, yeah. wait, let's, Let me let's get him out of this. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> everything about Chomper is that he's the best. Uh, he's a southern bobcat. He's about two and a half years old now, and he is just a rare anomaly. I cannot, uh, I can't, I can't tell you that they're all like this because they're not. We right. just got lucky. We got real lucky. Got so we've lucky. met a lot of other Southern Bobcats that are not friendly. Right. And, you know, we knew that with him. We were taking a chance. He could not like us. He could like us. The fact that he turned out this way, I'd like to take credit for, but he's just innately this sweet. Well, you yeah. know, all animals, and, and people, people just don't know this, that all animals, whether they're a bobcat or an iguana or a python or an elephant, they all have their own personalities. They're all different. Uh, they're all different. Everyone we... thinks if they see a really sweet one in a video with somebody, oh, I want to go get one because I want that. Exactly. You do not know that you're going to get that, and you could very well get the opposite. Exactly. And so we think, okay, all pythons behave mm -hmm. this way. All bobcats no. behave this way. Definitely no, not. No, they don't. No. And even with him, I mean, you can see these nails. He's getting excited, so the nails are coming out a little more. Um, he does a little nibbling on the ear. They can get overstimulated so even though he's this sweet if he gets overstimulated his sweetness could still be injury causing right so just because he's sweet doesn't mean he won't hurt you maybe it won't be on purpose but he could still i mean look at how excited he's getting and all these nails are coming out <laughs> you know so he doesn't mean to hurt but right, his right. nails could hurt right. <laughs> the sweetest oh, baby and chompers loves belly rubs he does loves the <laughs> it's belly just rubs. crazy but yeah, I mean, it's like even with a sweet animal, I still have to watch him. I still have to watch what his behavior is doing. I've right. got to watch his excitement level. I've got to remove us from a situation if he gets too excited. Um, so just because he's friendly doesn't mean he's safe. Right. Right. <laughs> so now how long have you had Chompers? We've had Chompers since he was 12 weeks old. So we've had him for about two and a half years. Um, and he's just been a complete joy from day one. You know, we got another bobcat at the same time and she's not near as friendly. So right. it just goes to show you, we raised them both, you know, around the same people, the same way. And one turned out like this and one turned out where we can't even touch them. Right. So, you know, people see Chomper and they think, oh, I want a bobcat. And it's like, you might get a bobcat that eats your face off. <laughs> and that's what I wanted to talk about was, yeah, I mean, I mean, Chompers is like, He's we didn't just like know. A house cat, yeah, you know? we I mean, didn't know as, he would be like this. Right, he's just as friendly as a house cat. He is, but, but a lot stinkier. Right, pees on everything, uh, scratches up everything. Still likes to chase small dogs. He does great with our big dogs, small dogs, cats. He would eat them. Yeah, you know. Right. So he's still a bobcat. He still has got all those natural instincts. We just got very lucky that he's a rare anomaly that's just people friendly. Absolutely. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, people will see this and think, I want a bobcat they do. as a pet. They do. And no, I mean, these aren't pets. I, I, I struggle with posting him right. because he is so friendly that it makes people want one. And so it's, it's hard to share him with the world, but then also protect people and make them understand you will most likely not get this exactly. if you get a bobcat exactly uh, not to mention that even he can have his moments when there's food involved or if I'm making him do something he doesn't want to do that I have to respect what he's capable sure. of you know so yes I like to share Chomper with the world and I you know he's so special you want everybody to meet him but you also want to give them the accurate expectation that this is not normal right. <laughs> right. Well, and then you can see the back of the ears they've got that camouflage so that is designed to look like ears from the back so in the wild, it basically would make something from behind them think that they can see them. So right. they are less likely to be attacked from behind because something will think that they're looking at them. Yeah, those look like eyes yep. if you're, you know, seeing that through yeah. the woods or something. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, oh! I told you. I told you. See? I told you. I'm not going to be able to get it back. Oh, no. My... I told you I would not be able to get it back. I told you if he gets something, I can't get it back.
Uh, Chompers, can I have my windsock back? Can I can I have my windsock back? Yeah, he he has got that. Uh oh, I need that. Chompers, come here. <laughs> I grabbed my windsock right off my mic. <laughs> That's even where a house cat, we can get it back. You're right, right. Check it back. Come here. Chompers. Got it. Nice. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> it's just, you know, I mean, it's It might still, be punctured. It's still good. It's just a little, you know, wet and, you know, spittled upon, but it's still good. <laughs> All right, so we're going to film the rest of this episode without the windsock on my microphone. Come here, chumps. Come here. Come here. I forgive you, buddy. <laughs> He's like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but say, I don't care. I do what I want. That's right. That's right. Oh, you are such a sweetheart. But you could hear even when he growled that, he, and I and I tried to take it. Yeah, yeah. He growled. You right, know, right. So he still has all the capabilities Absolutely. of a wild bobcat. Absolutely. Chomper butt. Oh, yeah, you got up there Go with help from Mama. Boy. That's good. That's Go good. Boy. He's all fired up. I know. He's, he's upset that I <laughs> took the windsock off. Boy. He is. He wants to he play is. with it. Very sweet to have gone from growling back to... Absolutely. I mean, it's just crazy. Right. Yeah, it's we just... took a toy away from him, yeah. and he's still just yeah. as sweet as can be. So in Florida, these guys are what is called a Class Two permit. Uh, so it does require a specific amount of acreage, specific kind of fencing, and specific number of hours. You've got to do a thousand hours of training mm. with an already permitted individual um, just to apply to get the permit. So it's not like you could just go out and buy a bobcat even if you wanted to. There is specific gauging on the the fence. That's got to be a certain gauge. It's got to be a certain strength, a certain size, and then, like I said, the hours of training and then you have to submit all that and have it be approved by the state before you can even get a permit to buy one. Gotcha. So Florida's got a, a class system. So you've got class three, class two, class one. Um, class three is your kind of easier stuffed um, foxes, raccoons. Um, there are some things that are class three that probably shouldn't be. Certain types of primates. And then class two is kind of your medium sized cats, other types of more dangerous primates. And then class one is your lions, tigers, bears, oh my. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, so, you know, f you just can't go out and buy a bobcat as a pet, obviously. No, and you shouldn't. Heart. Even if you live somewhere that you can, you shouldn't. Absolutely. Um, and it's not just the permit system, it's the care. I it's mean, the care. We have this entire enclosure mm -hmm. here. And, and this is just step one of the enclosure. Right. It's We've already got plans to expand. Um, we're always trying to find new things for enrichment, right. things that he can climb on. I'm always putting new toys in here. These, now you're tripping over I all. am. I'm tripping over toys. These both had little, you know, bouncy balls attached to them. Um, you can see what they do to right, them. Right, this is what right, they can right. do to your face. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's like, yes, you can build them a big, beautiful enclosure, but you still have to provide enrichment. Absolutely. You can't just say, oh, he's got a big, beautiful enclosure. He's good to go. No, that enclosure still gets boring Absolutely. if everything stays the same. So we're always, I mean, he likes social interactment, so we do a lot of that. Is interactment a word? Interact action. Interaction. Action. Mint and mint and mint. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows what we mean. <laughs> so he likes social interaction. That's a type of enrichment for him. We're always doing new, you know, big dog toys and things like that. Um, he does have a, a friend that he spends time with because they love each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, and then let me tell you about the the poop and the pee that this thing produces. Yeah, yeah, because it is he's a big animal, strong. and therefore we're yes. gonna have you know very smelly. Their pee is very strong. Uh, he will mark us occasionally. So you always gotta watch out yeah, for that. Yeah, don't, don't, you chomps, You don't. can see how this is all kind of scratched yep, from, yep. you know, just wanting to scratch his nails. Right, right. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot. Oh, he just, and he just did sprayed he, me. Did he mark you? He marked me. I'm, <laughs> I didn't mean to speak it into a part of the clan now. That's good. <laughs> I okay, spoke apparently, it into existence. <laughs> uh, apparently Chompers now owns me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not do that again, Chomps. <laughs> you like shoelaces, too. Yeah, yeah. Watch him, watch whoa, whoa, him, whoa, watch hey, him. <laughs> you, hey, put that butt away. <laughs> Chompers, put the butt away. Chomper butt. <laughs> uh, we also learned early on with Chomper that he likes, he prefers to poop in water. Oh, So yeah. we do a big poop bowl, and then he has a drinking bowl that is kind of hung up a little higher so that he can't really poop in it. Um, 
it's not fun to change. No. It's very gross. So yes, he's he's beautiful and all that, but all the things that go with him are not always beautiful. Absolutely. And you know, people need to know that before yeah. they see a cute, you know, bobcat yeah. like this who's so unbelievably yeah. friendly that, you know, there is a a lot of responsibility that comes oh. with this. <laughs> Including busted noses. <laughs> there you go. And slobber, so much slobber. So much slobber, so much Ugh. spray. And then what are we uh, feeding chompers? So we do um, chicken that has the bone ground up in it. So mm -hmm. we take big chunks of chicken with the bone, we put it through a meat grinder. There's also a vitamin that we put on it. It comes from Missouri, it's like a supplement. Sure. Um, and then we can also do, you know, frozen thawed rodents. So they like rats and mice yep, and all yep. that. That's pretty much the bulk of it. We have tried, we've gotten some fancy meats donated right. and they actually did not like them oh so, really so like filet mignon they have no interest in um but that raw chicken with the bone seems to be what they prefer the most oh that's kind of interesting yeah. we actually. like the bone for the calcium and everything that it, they get from that so i enjoy that they have the bone mixed in there and then obviously the supplements as well right but that supplement's really for if you're feeding slab meat that doesn't have bone in it right um, but we do a little bit of both Keeping bobcats, and you know, you have so much stuff here, and mm -hmm. we're gonna, you know, show all of that in future videos. <laughs> um, hey, you. Yeah. <laughs> Come here, chamber butt. Don't put put that butt Come away. On. Come on. Put the Come butt on. away. Hup, hup. Good boy. All right, That's fantastic. A good boy. Good slobbery boy. So we were talking about the enclosure, and mm -hmm. so you know, it's not just enough to feed them, care for them, give them enrichment. You know, to build an enclosure like this outdoors, that's it's really easier expensive. said than done right so everybody says oh yeah I'll get one and I'll build them a big outdoor enclosure okay that sounds great that's so easy to say and it sounds awesome do you have fifteen thousand dollars to build an outdoor enclosure because right. at a minimum that's what it will run between the wire the wood the labor the things that go inside the lights everything it comes out 15 grand for what is what we consider a minimum right uh, there are people that keep bobcats in much smaller enclosures i don't like that they have a lot of energy they need to have yeah. room to move around this is phase one we're already planning to expand his um so yeah i'd say 10 to 15 grand on top of whatever the bobcat happens to cost you know say it's three thousand dollars that's just the bobcat so yeah you might have three grand to get the animal right. um but do you have the other 15 and then not to mention i mean we spend about 400 dollars a month on meat here right so right it's it, it all adds up and people don't really think about that until they see it until they have to actually do it uh-oh oh well somebody's yeah. here hello <laughs> um, but yeah people just don't think about that factor of everything else that goes into the cost of owning the animal right absolutely yeah. and it's not like you can you know go out and get a bobcat and say well this is going to be a house cat no these can't stay in your house no, that's not a good environment not. for them we raised him in the house for about three to four months and then we were ready for it to go outside right, right. <laughs> oh what's what's happening over there uh, that's the security system <laughs> aka the lemurs the lemurs are going off yeah, yeah. all right they're well. just letting us know that someone's here chomper just went into his little what i call the hot house um so it is an enclosed area that has a heater in it for winter time even though we're in florida even though we're in florida we do get chilly in the winter um so and then we can unplug the heaters and things like that and so in the summertime it just serves as what i call like a safe space so if they want to get away from people that are out here if they don't want to be on exhibit when someone comes by they can go in there and be completely hidden and they don't have to be on display if they don't want to um, I think that's a big part of the whole exhibition world is that mm -hmm. you need to it needs to be on the animals terms right so luckily chomper enjoys it he's always out his roommate does not always enjoy it so she has a place she can go and hide that's fantastic <laughs> so guys I just want to thank Sabrina for having me over once again to play with my favorite Bobcat in the world you know as tempting as it is to have these guys as a pet they are just not really good pets. They're awesome animals. They are awesome to work with if you have the experience and the capability to care for them properly. And guys, there's lots more animal adventures coming up, so hit that subscribe button when you do hit that bell so you never miss an upload. And until the next animal adventure, love the planet and rattle on. <laughs>